JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 8th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But uh, before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian session Friday. It gained the most versus CHF, JPY and the Euro in that order, while it decked out the least gains against uh, NOC and SEC. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the Canadian dollar. Now the strengthening of the US dollar and the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie and QE suggest uh, that um, suggests that the markets traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday and today, in, and today in Asia. Nonetheless, the weakening of the safe havens yen and franc points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU and uh, US indices were a sea of green, with all three of Wall Street's main indices hitting new all-time highs. The upbeat morale rolled over into the Asian session as well, with uh, the only exception being China Shanghai Composite, which slid 0.17%. It seems that investors continued cheering the Democrats' uh, victories in the runoff elections in the US state of uh, Georgia. Now, with a Democrat controlled uh, Congress, President elect Biden's fiscal agenda may pass much more easily, which means more stimulus and infrastructure spending. It also means higher taxes and more regulation, which is negative for stocks. But we still believe that due to the coronavirus vaccinations, the fiscal support in the US, the monetary policy easing around the globe, and the, pre and the Brexit uh, trade accord, the path of least resistance for equities and other risk linked assets may be to the upside. Now, as for today, the main event on the agenda is the U.S. employment report for December. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have slowed to 71,000 from 245,000 in November, but bearing in mind that on Wednesday the ADP reported that the private sector has lost 123,000 jobs, we would consider the risks of the NFPs as tilted to the downside. Although the, AD, the ADP is far from a reliable predictor of the NFPs, it is the only major gauge we have. Now, the unemployment rate is forecast to have ticked up to 6.8% from 6.7%, while average hourly earnings are forecast to have slowed to 0.2% month over month from 0.3% which, uh, barring any, any revisions to the prior, to, to the prior uh, monthly prints, uh, is likely to leave the year-over-year -year rate unchanged at 4.4%. Uh, the minutes of the latest FOMC meeting revealed that some participants noted that they could consider uh, further adjustments uh, to their QE purchases, such as increasing the pace of purchases or, wait or weighting them towards longer-term uh, longer maturities. That said, other members said that once progress towards their goals had been attained, a gradual tapering could begin. In our view, a soft deployment report could increase the chances for more uh, monetary policy support, which could prove uh, negative for the US dollar. The big question is how equities will react. On the one hand, they could slide on signs of a weaker uh, labor market, while on the other, they could gain on expectations of uh, more support by the Fed. That said, whatever the reaction is, we stick to our guns that the overall path remains positive and we would expect equities to continue marching north in the near term, even if they correct lower on a soft employment report. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, uh, at the same time with the US employment report, we get jobs data from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is expected to have inched up to 8.6% to from 8.5%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the Canadian economy has lost 
27.5 thousand jobs after gaining 62.1 thousand in, uh, in November. After scaling back its QE purchases in uh, October, the Bank of Canada decided to keep its policy unchanged in December, noting that the rebound in the global and Canadian economies has unfolded largely as the bank anticipated in its October monetary policy report. Officials acknowledged that the positive vaccine news is providing some reassurance, but added that uh, the pace and breadth of the global rollout of vaccinations remains uncertain. Overall, the language was on the neutral side and the weak employment report is unlikely to spark speculation for more reductions in QE purchases. On the contrary, it may add to chances of a QE re-increase, which could hurt the Canadian dollar. That said, we believe that the overall path of the commodity currency will depend on developments surrounding the broader sentiment. As we already noted, we see risk appetite improving in the first months of 2021, uh, something that could prove uh, supportive uh, for oil prices and thereby for the Canadian dollar. Elsewhere, we get Germany's trade balance for November and Eurozone's unemployment rate for the same month. Germany's surplus is expected to have slightly declined, while Eurozone's unemployment rate is expected to have ticked up to 8.5% from 8.4%. We also have one speaker on today's agenda, and this is Fed uh, Vice uh, Chairman uh, Richard Clarida. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.